We're Sarah and Alex James, and that's our son Vance. Oh, and we've got another one on the way. After living out of our own Sprinter van for over two years, traveling all over the US and Canada, we decided it was time to settle down. So we bought a house and a shop in Boise, Idaho, and now we build custom van conversions. We take empty cargo vans and transform them into beautiful tiny home on wheels. So come on in for our latest van tour. Welcome to our latest van tour. This is in a 2019 170 extended 3500 Sprinter van. Oh, oh, and it's a four x four, can't forget that fact. And we are so excited about this build. I think that it might be our favorite one yet. This is our 11th van that we've built. So we are gonna walk you through the full thing and show you all the features. Some of the highlights include 500 amp hours of battle-worn batteries, an aluminous roof rack and ladder, radiant heated flooring that's actually 12 volts, a 12 volt AC unit, and so much more. So let's just jump into it. We built this for our client who is just gonna be traveling part-time in this for fun adventures. She has two very large dogs, which is why we kind of left this very nice and open at the sliding door and didn't bring the kitchen out very far so that her dogs can kind of have an area to lay down. Up front, we've got a hanging closet and storage down beneath. And then our wet bath with a separate urine diverting toilet that goes to a holding tank underneath the van, as well as a tile shower. Now this is the 3500 Sprinter, so it can handle the extra weight of the tile. All in all, the tile only adds about 150 pounds. We use a foam backer board so that we're not adding extra weight using a cement backer board. The shower has a 15 gallon gray water tank again, mounted underneath the van. We have the Nautilus self-cleaning retractable door. So this just slides in, which is great because it contains all the water in the bathroom. Gives you a little bit of privacy as well and just retracts on itself. Next up is the kitchen. It's got a nice farmhouse sink with this beautiful gold and black faucet, really love this. We will link everything down in the description below or it will be in the blog post linked down below. If you're looking for the specific like faucet and sink and all that kind of stuff, it'll be linked down below. So she's got her sink, a little bit of storage underneath that. Lots of upper cabinets here. We love this design because it's super functional with all the upper cabinet storage. If you're doing a full-time platform bed, that storage underneath the bed is only accessible from the back doors. And it's one of the reasons why we love this beach house layout is because you have all these upper cabinets that are accessible from inside the van. So if it's late at night and you need something, you're not having to you know, go outside and open your back doors. Nice tile backsplash, butcher block countertop, a 65 liter isotherm 12 volt fridge and then just extra storage, a couple drawers and all that good stuff. At the end of her kitchen here, she does have an outlet for 110 power, as well as her 12 volt dimmer switch for the lights that run along the ceiling. Next to that, she has her controller for her S-Bar D2 diesel heater that is located underneath the passenger seat. So one of my favorite things about this van is actually the style in here. We did the gold brass um, handle poles and faucet, and then we did the blue gray tile backsplash to match the color of her van. This tile is pretty much exactly the same color as well as her dresser area. We really wanted to tie that color in from the outside and bring it in because when she has her doors closed, you will see that color of the van on the inside, which you can see right behind me. So we, again, wanted to incorporate that into the design and we just love the way that all of this came together with the warm wood tones, the light bright white cabinets, and then the blue gray tied in. And then the tile in the bathroom is just like my favorite. So next up is her dresser. She's got a couple drawers for storage, a cabinet for storage, and another little mini drawer below that. Now, one thing I did not mention in the kitchen, you will see there is not a built-in cooktop. If you've ever watched any of our van tours before, you probably know why. The reason why is because it takes up a lot of countertop space. You also have, you know, the mechanism underneath it, maybe propane, all that kind of stuff. So it takes up a lot of your storage in the cabinet itself. And then again, if you're not that big of a cook, you're only gonna use your stove top for one meal a day. 
we prefer to store that away. Then you can pull it out, plug it in, or set up your propane just when you need it. And that way you can put it away when you're done and you can keep all this nice open countertop space. So that is what this client opted for. She's actually gonna be using an induction cooktop. So again, we've got plenty of storage. And oh, look, Alex put sil a silverware holder in here. How nice, we've got plenty of storage. Um, she could put it in that drawer or this drawer. A cooktop would easily fit into one of these. And then again, it's not taking up valuable counter space in such a small space. As we move to the back of the van, we come to our convertible table bed area with a table mounted on a lagoon pedestal. The lagoon pedestal is great because it can swivel all the way around. So it makes it really easy to get in and out of the benches. I'll show you right now. <laughs> so it's great because you can slide it all the way over to one side, especially if you need to access something up in your upper cabinets back here. It's really easy to then, again, move this all the way out of the way. And then you can easily sit down where you like and come in. Another great feature about the lagoon is that you're not kicking something at the floor if you have a standard pedestal mount into the floor. And again, it swivels all around and it, yes, it does spin as well, as long as it doesn't hit my pregnant belly here. <laughs> it's a little tighter when you've got a baby inside. To make the bed, this table comes off the lagoon pedestal. It drops down onto this little cleat that we have running along the bench. There's another fill-in piece and then the cushions come together and it makes an almost king size bed. It's a little bit bigger than a queen, queen, but not quite a king size. We did install two T-vent windows back here so that you can actually open both of these windows, use the vent fan and get a nice airflow back here when you're sleeping. And then the two back door windows actually came from the factory directly from Mercedes. So you will see the, the lines on the windows. That's her defrost for her back door windows. Now, I think we're gonna jump into more of the specs. So the electrical, more of the features that this van has. We're gonna switch it over to Alex so you, he can explain all that stuff for you guys, including the awesome 12 volt radiant heated flooring. So now let's talk about what powers this van. This van does have a 500 amp hour lithium battery bank from Battleborn Batteries. So that gives it plenty of juice to be able to go off grid and be off grid for a long time with the 400 watts of solar that are on the Illumines roof rack. This client, as Sarah mentioned, is a female who's gonna be traveling primarily solo with her two dogs as she adventures pre-retirement and maybe going full-time eventually when she is retired. So she wanted all of the features of a house, a tiny home on wheels built into this van. And that's what the beach house layout, layout is designed for. So with the 500 amp hours, a 33 gallon freshwater tank, a 12 volt air cooling unit, a shower that has hot water and an 85 liter fridge, this gives her all of the features and comforts of a home that she has the ability to drive anywhere. Now, when it comes to these electrical systems, Everybody does not build vans for a living, so we tried to make them as simple for the owner to operate as possible. So one of the cool features that we include in all of our vans is a control panel. And you'll see in a lot of builds, people will mount these directly onto a wall, but we do not do that because most of these units do have some sort of light on them. And there is nothing worse than laying down to go to bed at night and you have a LED light shining right in your face. So we do install this in one of the upper cabinets. And as you can tell, she's got quite a bit of storage in her uppers, so we're not taking away too much storage capacity there. So above her dresser is her control panel. In this control panel, we have a few very important features. One is her inverter remote simple flip of the switch and her 3000 watt Victron inverter turns on, which is connected to all of her household outlets that are installed in the van, all of her 110 or 120 volt outlets. She has two 110 volt outlets and one 120 volt outlet installed in this van. She also has a 12 volt switch panel here for different things like her water pump. She also has tw three 12 volt ball valves that are connected to her gray water tanks underneath the van so that she can dump responsibly as she is on the road. She has a 15 gallon tank for her shower. She has a five gallon tank for her toilet and a five gallon tank for her sink. 
She also has a valve here for her Fresair 12 volt air cooling system. Now this is what is right above me. And this is a really cool system that we have recently found and are super excited to be partnering with Fresair and actually sell this product directly on our website if you're interested in a way that you can keep your van cool in hot temperatures as you're traveling. This is a water cooled system. So there is a reservoir that's mounted underneath the driver's side bench in her water compartment that then recirculates to a filter filtration system in the Fresair unit itself. It's filtered through a pine filter, so it's not just dumping moisture into the van like a traditional swamp cooler, but it still provides nice cool air coming from all four vents. It has four different speeds. It has a sensor that tells you when the reservoir tank needs refilled. So that is what this switch is for because we have a 12 volt ball valve connected to our fresh water tank. So when she needs to refill that system, all she has to do is flip this switch, turn the water pump on, and you can hear the water pump going. Her fresh air tank is filling right now. And then we just shut the pump off, shut the valve, and just like that, she can continue to have cool air coming through her fresh air unit. One of the great features of this system is the low power draw and the ability to use this on a 12 volt system versus a traditional RV style or camper van style air conditioner. Now the air conditioners on the market primarily have to run off of a 120 volt system, which means you would have to be plugged into shore power in order to run that. If you did try to run it off your battery bank, you probably wouldn't be able to run it for very long. So that's why most people that have a traditional air conditioner in their van, they're using it because they're plugged into shore power, staying at campgrounds the most of the time. But if you're not staying at a campground or staying parked next to a house where you can plug into shore power, this is super useful to be able to run off of your 12 volt battery bank. And again, she has 500 amp hours of lithium battery. So she has more than enough power to be able to run this thing during the day when she needs to and not have to worry about her battery consumption. So a couple other features on her control panel. We have a tank sensor for her freshwater tank that tells her how much water she has. That little dial is right here. And she also has a Victron BMV. So this is a great way of tracking her the voltage in her battery system and how many amps she's using and or bringing in from her solar and everything that she has in the van. So that is up here in the corner. In addition to that, she also has a little remote here on the side. This is for a 12 volt LED tow kick light that we have underneath her kitchen. This is our favorite lighting in the van for the evening time. Um, whenever we would park somewhere and we were chilling down for the evening, we would just turn this on and it's really nice evening light because it is more of an ambient light and you don't have to worry about it shining out of your windows like you do your overhead lights. We have been thinking about a radiant heated flooring system in a van for a while now and we came across warm floor and this is a really cool system that we were able to implement into this van again it is a 12 volt system you can find more specs in the link down below on the power draw but it's actually not that much so she has three strips two strips running down the middle and one strip running in front of the kitchen at the doorway that will heat her floor it takes about 30 minutes and within an hour it's really toasty on the floor the nice thing about this, it's not designed to heat the entire van. We have a 12 volt diesel S bar heater for that. Because we're using a vinyl flooring, when it is cold outside, this flooring does feel frigid. And so the goal of this radiant heated flooring system was just to take that edge off of the cold floor as you're in the van and you're moving around, especially in the morning. So we did put the controller for this close to the bed. When she's laying in her bed, she can open the compartment in her kitchen, turn on the system. Again, takes about 30 minutes to actually warm up. And then she's got warm floors for her and for her dogs to lay on. In the back, we have extra storage in our U-Bench. And when you open this, we have a couple utility features. So we have her shore power cable, which she can use to charge her battery bank through her 3000 watt Victron inverter charger. In addition to that, there is also a 120 volt outlet in this. So if she has anything that she wants to charge while she's driving, she can plug it in here. Or if she wants to plug something in outside while she's camping, she has the ability to open this up and plug into. And this is also where her water heater is plugged in. This is her fill system for the van. We prefer to have a hose that actually extends out the van because most of the fill systems that you find for camper vans, they leak when you plug your hose in. This way it's leaking outside of the van and not leaking in the van. This does have a valve on it so that you can open it up and shut it. 
which is a very useful feature so you don't have to sprint to the spigot where you're filling up in order to shut it off. In addition to that, she also wanted a shower out the back of the van for washing off her dogs. So we do have an outdoor shower that she can plug in, turn on her water pump, and then she can give her pups a shower out the back. This van does also have the Illuminous roof rack and side ladder, which are standard on all of our builds. We love that feature. We love the way it looks. We love the extra storage ability that it gives you. And we love how easy it is to mount 400 watts of Renogy Solar on their clamp on solar mounts. There's a few features that we always do to the outside of our vans for rust prevention. One of those would be doing a truck bed liner treatment on the roof, which we did on this van. We also added a truck bed liner treatment behind the plastic panels, below the plastic panels, and over the plastic panels, because that is one of the areas these vans are known to rust, as well as we did a truck bed treatment on the front bumpers and the rear bumpers, which just looks awesome. Because this is the four x four, we went ahead and we added running boards to make it easier for our client to get in and out of the vehicle. We are super proud of this van. The client is literally flying in tomorrow and picking this up and we cannot wait to see her and show it to her and get her reaction in person. It's one of our favorite parts of this whole process. We really hope that you guys enjoyed this tour. Maybe it gave you some ideas for your own DIY camper build. If you want this layout and all the specs and dimensions of the kitchen cabinets and the bed and all that fun stuff, you can find a link down below for our van layout guide program. We have layouts for all of the vans that we have built in that program so that we can help inspire you and maybe help you cut some corners and save some time when it comes to your own DIY camper van conversion. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.